You might have heard the word BPR thrown around before, but what does it stand for? BPR stands for Best Preview Render. There's a big old button in the default UI right here. And when you turn it on, it basically creates a good quality with good anti-aliasing render of your model. However, this button is just turning on the preview, of course. It doesn't actually render out anything. To do so, we're going to go to Document and Export. If you hover over Export, you'll notice that it says Export Image. And that's what we're going to be doing. Hit that and you'll be invited to save out your ZBrush document as an image. Hit Save. And then you can hit OK. This is perfectly a preview of what you're doing here. Hit OK. Keep in mind that you're working within the constraints of the document itself. So for example, if you're too zoomed in like this, your render will also look this zoomed in. This is what my render looks like. It's a perfect rendition of what I was seeing in my documents. You can use render passes in ZBrush easily to get more control over the final look. However, you will need to use some sort of image editing software that will allow you to layer those render passes together in a process called compositing. To get access to your render passes, simply go to Render and BPR Render Pass. And here we can see some of the default render passes and we can even preview them if we hover over. For example, Depth, Shadow, Shaded, Composite Image, and even Mask. These render passes will correspond to the latest render you did. To export any of these, simply click them one time and you'll be prompted to choose where to save it to. Did you know that you can use cool filters with your BPR? To do so, simply open up the light box and go to filters. And you'll notice a ton of pre-made interesting filters right here. For example, let's see this watercolor one. Double click that. Nothing will happen at first. You must turn on the best preview render mode in order to see the changes. And <laughs> there we go. I really like playing with these filters. You can switch between any filter anytime to see what it looks like. If you go to render and BPR filters, you can edit filters or you can make your own. You can get some very interesting and unique effects. And every filter is going to react slightly different to your changes. When you go to document and export, the new image will have the filter applied. Here it is in an image software. A lot of people like saving out each render pass by hand. But if you have Photoshop, you can use the ZBrush to Photoshop plugin. To find it, go to Z plugin and just open up ZBrush to Photoshop. All of these different buttons right here are render passes that you can select. Albedo stands for base color. The lights will create different layers with lights applied to them so that you can play with the lighting. Object space normal pass creates a big old normal map that you can use for even masking your lights in the future. Preview is a copy of your preview pass, which is basically what we're seeing behind us right now. Specular makes it shiny and reflective. Structure creates a nice black and white, very structural look. All of these masks mask different parts with colors. So for example, subtool masks makes each subtool a different color on a layer so that you can easily mask it in the future. Ambient occlusion creates this nice soft shadowing, almost like um, ambient shadowing. BPR creates a BPR pass. The best creates a very high quality pass. Depth creates a layer that measures how far from the camera and how close the camera each pixel is. Mask separates it from the background. Polygroup ID creates a different color for each polygroup. Shadow creates just a basic shadow. TS normal creates tangent space normal pass, which can also be used to do some tricks that will let you mask out some lights. Subsurface scattering creates the illusion of light shining through the surface a little bit. Although this pass does take a little bit more setup to get right. Once you've selected all the passes you want, they're not all mandatory. You can simply hit send to Photoshop CC. That will run a script that opens up Photoshop and creates each one of your passes. Don't forget that if you have a filter turned on, the filter will come through in your Photoshop. What you see here is each pass being rendered individually. Here we are in Photoshop. Each one of these layers represents one of those passes that we talked about. For example, this is what the specular looks like on and off. Here's all the different lights being applied. The preview, albedo, best, and the BPR all in here. 
Before you get started, I recommend turning each layer off and on to see what it does. And from there, you can kind of choose what you're going to leave on, what you're going to edit to get the look that you want. Here's what the polygroups look like. Here's what the subtool ID looks like. OS normal, tangent space normal, structure, depth. I really like using this one with a multiply because then it like darkens some of the background and blends it in, creates a moody look. We have the shadow, the ambient occlusion, and specular. You can play around with these layers, do whatever you want to them, duplicate them, change their colors, and then of course, just save out your project from Photoshop like you normally would. Compositing is a whole skill on its own, and we will go into it step by step in my next step series on Cineversity. So make sure to tune in for that.